We're here today with the new exhibit for opening for 2022. The work is by Susan Egbert of Roanoke and Gina Luthien Stanley of Roanoke. Sue is here today and she's going to talk a little bit about her work. She does monoprint, mixed media collage, batiks, and some paintings. Hey, Sue, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background, and then we'll talk about this nothing but blue skies. All right, well, my name is Susan Egbert. I am from Roanoke, as Nancy said. I've been doing art for many, many years. Started out uh, with my father, who was an artist, and uh, just continued on for, for years and have enjoyed doing that. So, so tell us a little bit about this one, because you don't have a lot of paintings in this show, but I really like this one. Oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, this was just sort of, I wanted to play around with the sky and clouds and, and try to be loose. And, uh, but also incorporate some stamping and give some texture to it. So it's, but it is straight acrylic, which as you say, I don't do all the time, but it's fun to, to do that medium and then switch to something else and just keep things rolling like that. So as you've said, you work with a lot of different medium. And, right. and I really am impressed by that because <laughs> Most of us can manage to do one thing. You seem to manage to do several things well. Oh, thank you. But I particularly like aspirations because I've always admired your collages and your sense mm. of design. So if you'll tell us a little bit about where this came from, because there's a nice surprise in that when you look at it. Well, yeah, it's um, a lot of times I do a lot of landscape work, a lot of, I used to do a lot of real detailed pencil drawing, so I thought I'd get back to that a little bit with the birds in the nest. And uh, then I had this, photograph that we took in uh, Ireland with some rooks in the trees and and I was just playing with pattern um, and the collage but I wanted to incorporate and tie them all together so it was sort of like thinking about what these little chicks are thinking about as they when they grow up <laughs> but I do have fun with stamping in here and and the collage papers um, some are hand painted and some are commercially produced but um, and then I also like to it's on a board so I like to leave some of the wood showing through in places too that just gives a nice warm tone to it. Right. This particular piece is a, an acrylic batik which is a newer medium that I've been working in and really enjoying. Uh, the subject matter are uh, my two girls, my niece and nephew and two friends and it was just something we captured them on our back deck many years ago. Uh, and it, it took me a while to get to the painting, but we just loved the, the expressions and the poses. And uh, it was also a challenge to do people in batik. So that was sort of two reasons to do it. Uh, but it has gotten a lot of nice comments and I've given uh, copies to the parents of these, the other children too. So it's funny that you, that hangs in our house. So talk a little bit about the technique in the acrylic batiks, if oh. you would. Okay, it is a wax resist process. Um, a lot of people use watercolor, I prefer acrylic. So basically I start out with my drawing, then I transfer it with ink to rice paper, which gives you some of this little uh, fleck in there of, of fiber in the paper. Um, and then whatever I want to keep white, I'll wax with melted paraffin, and then do a light wash of maybe um, usually a yellow or something like that. If I want to keep that color when it's dry, I wax that out. And so it's just layer after layer of wax, then a thin wash. And at the end, you get all waxed. And I crumple that up and you put a wash through, which gives you some of these little bits that look crackled. And I usually do a blue. Um, then you melt all the wax away and see what you have. This particular series of mixed media collages are created with rusted papers, poured ink, and then collaged and hand-drawn elements. So there's a lot of different processes that this goes through 
before it makes it to a finished piece. The intent of these pieces is left basically up to the viewer to find the language that appeals to you visually, whether it be a color, a pattern, a shape. It could be a series of lines. It could be the texture. It could be the whole thing put together. So it depends on your perspective and your point of view as to what you get out of the piece. It's a visual type of braille, if there is such a thing. You'll have to translate it and let me know what you think.